Total Anomalous Pulmonary Venous Return is an extremely long name and also extremely intuitive name for a congenital heart defect, a cardiac malformation that consists essentially into the pulmonary veins draining into the right side of the heart instead of the left side of the heart as they should. Let's see. Total Anomalous Pulmonary Venous Return Pulmonary Venous Return so, we are talking about the pulmonary veins, anomalous pulmonary venous return, so it's a malformation of the pulmonary veins. The pulmonary veins are draining in an anomalous way or into the wrong place and total anomalous pulmonary venous return. So, all four pulmonary veins are draining into the wrong place. We don't have, for example, one of them draining still into the left atrium. All of them are draining to the wrong place. So, how could this happen? Well, embryologically, much like all organs, the pulmonary venous plexus originates in the lung. If you remember lung embryology, you may recall that the lungs originate from the lung buds, from the primitive gut. So, when the lung first originates, it has no intrinsic connection to the heart. It's originating from the gut. And until 25 to 27 days of gestation, the developing pulmonary venous plexus will have connections only to the cavo and portal systems. It's only at 27 to 29 days of gestation that the pulmonary vein will start to appear as an outpouching of the posterior left atrial wall, and by 30 days of gestation, it will fuse with the pulmonary venous plexus and cause it to start draining into the left atrium. As a consequence, the pulmonary venous plexus connection with the portal and cavo systems will devolve and disappear. Since the drainage into the cavo system is prior to the drainage into the left atrium, if, for some reason, the common pulmonary vein fails to form to originate from the left atrium or somehow fails to connect to the pulmonary venous plexus, it will just keep draining into the cavo or portal systems, never being diverted to the left heart. Instead, all of the oxygenated blood from the lungs will just be thrown into the right heart along with all the deoxygenated blood coming from the body. To which you may ask, where exactly in the right heart? Do you mean the right atrium? And the answer is, well, there are many possibilities. Some are more likely than others. Total anomalous pulmonary venous return is traditionally classified according to the site of pulmonary venous drainage. We have type 1, the most common, with supracardia connection or drainage, accounting for roughly 50% of cases in which the pulmonary veins drain into a common vein and then into the superior vena cava or one of their tributaries, which is precisely the one I've drawn here. We have type 2, the one with cardiac drainage or intracardiac drainage, in which the pulmonary veins drain into the coronary sinus or directly into the right atrium. Then type 3, the infradiaphragmatic connection, also referred as infracardiac drainage, in which the pulmonary veins cross the diaphragm to drain to the portal venous system. And finally, we have type 4, the least common, with mixed connections, in which the pulmonary veins may drain into different sites or multiple sites. Then someone may ask me, what if some of these pulmonary veins actually drains into the left atrium as it should, is it a mixed type total anomalous pulmonary venous return? Well, no, of course not. Then it's a partial anomalous pulmonary venous return. If at least one of the pulmonary veins is draining correctly, then it's not a total malformation, it's a partial drainage problem. In the end, regardless of where exactly the pulmonary veins drain to, the important thing is that all that oxygenated blood coming from the lungs is going to be thrown together with the deoxygenated blood coming either from the superior vena cava 
or the portal vein or any other point of the system up to the right atrium itself which means that you have no fully deoxygenated blood in the heart. All blood in any of the heart chambers will have the same oxygen saturation, consisting of a mix of oxygenated blood and deoxygenated blood before arriving at the heart. On the traditional animation, rather than seeing a blue right heart and a red left heart, you will see all the chambers in purple. All the chambers are receiving mixed oxygenation blood. However, if this was the only defect, blood would just be pumped into the lungs, then be drained into the venous drainage, go to the heart again, and be pumped back into the lungs, and never leave this closed circuit, and never actually be pumped into the arterial systemic circulation. So this clearly can't be. What happens is that since there are no veins draining into the left atrium, its pressure will be much lower than the right atrium, which is receiving not only the systemic blood, as well as the pulmonary blood. So we have a high pressure right atrium and a low pressure left atrium. So we will have invariably an atrial septal defect. After all, since the pulmonary veins are not draining to the left heart, the only way blood can get to the left ventricle and then be pumped into the aorta is by arriving at the left atrium from the right atrium. So we will have mixed oxygenation blood arriving at the right atrium, then being pumped into both the right ventricle and the left atrium from where it will drain to the left ventricle and then both the right atrium and the left ventricle will pump mixed oxygenation blood again to the lungs and to the systemic circulation. With all the blood from both circulations coming to the right heart, twice what would be normal, the right atrium and the right ventricle will suffer from volume overload and the pulmonary blood flow will be three to five times the usual. This can obviously lead long term to right heart failure. The inheritance of pulmonary venous connection is questionable, but there seems to be some degree of multifactorial inheritance. Considering patients with TAPVR often have other family members with some kind of cardiac malformation, there seems to be some degree of heritability associated with a defect in pulmonary vein growth. However, exposure to teratogens such as lead and pesticide is also considered as a possible cause. Up to a third of TAPVR patients also have some major cardiac malformation. It's considered a rare disease, with an incidence of around 7 per 100,000 live births. Since the blood leaving the heart for the aorta is of mixed saturation, it's considered a cyanotic congenital heart disease. Although cyanosis occurs more frequently when there is some pulmonary venous obstruction. Remember that veins with anomalous preference are more likely to be obstructed. This is a severity factor and complicates the condition, potentially leading to early death in the first weeks or months of life. Otherwise, the disease may present as right heart failure. Its differential diagnosis includes other cyanotic congenital heart diseases, such as transposition of the great vessels or hypoplastic left heart syndrome, as well as even trunchus arteriosus or a large ventricular septal defect, for example. Although in children that survive more than one year, the differential diagnosis is usually with a large atrial septal defect, since many of these other conditions are also lethal. The gold standard for diagnosis is Doppler echocardiography, and fetal echocardiography may diagnose the disease before birth. There are many possible procedures and medications to stabilize the patient until surgery, but definitive treatment is almost invariably surgical. As complex as some of the surgeries may be, essentially, it all boils down to detaching the pulmonary veins from where they are draining into and reattaching them to the left atrium 
In addition to also closing the always present atrial septal defect. Prognosis is mostly good, and similar to what we see in other conditions, such as the transposition of the great arteries, while early mortality is high, survival rates after a successful surgery tend to be high, up to 90%. Prognosis is worse when TAPVR is also associated with other conditions such as other cardiac malformations, as well as heterotaxy syndrome, which, for example, has some degree of comorbidity with total anomalous pulmonary venous return. Thank you for watching this video. Please bear in mind that this is meant only as a medical review and should not be taken as medical advice. If you believe you or someone you know may have total anomalous pulmonary venous return, please seek your physician. If you believe one of our patients may have TAPVR, please check the latest protocols. If you are interested in congenital cardiac abnormalities or other medical review teams, make sure to click the links on the screen. Thank you for choosing to spend your time with me, and I hope to see you on the next video.